The main thing we're trying to accomplish with this lesson is this. When I click on a movie in the tree view, an expanded amount of information appears in the list view. In other words, in the tree view we just have the title, and in the list view we now have the title, the year, the rating, and the director. So we have a second level of information. The first part of how we accomplish this is in the form load event. You notice now instead of just having the node parent, we also have the node child. So when we have the nested loop and the node parent is created from the tree overview control, based on names from the genre table here uh, actually a call to our uh, uh, MC get genre dot rows where MC dot genre returns the na the a pointer to the uh, genre table And rows is the collection when the th within that table of the current uh, genre row, as retrieved with this for each statement. Then within each of these uh, genre rows, in the outer loop, we have an inner loop that retrieves each of the movies that belongs to the specific genre we're currently operating on i.e. science fiction, horror, and fantasy and that's returned via the uh, mc.getMoviesAndGenre function we discussed earlier in the what is data relation lesson but now when we add the name of the movie via the uh, parent node dot nodes dot add method. We also retain the node or more or less a pointer to the node in the node child. That's the second tree node defined above up here. And the reason we want to remember that, at least for the time within the loop, is that we want to assign something to yet another attribute of the node which is an attribute called tag and what we want to assign that is in effect a pointer to the movie row that it assigns all the information we know about the movie to the tag attribute so this is the first part of the trick child node dot tag equals movie row where movie row is the movie record we retrieved within the inner for each loop. Once all these tags have been set up uh, within the nested for each loops, we want to come down, click on events for the tree overview control, and specifically click on the after select event, which takes us to the code for. Uh, the event handler uh, tree overview underscore after select event and one of the arguments passed to this event is the tree view event args and e when we get the tree view events args uh, which is the e variable we can say dot node dot tag which is this tag that we originally assigned to each of the movie records in turn so within the event handler we retrieve this information in another variable called movie row which is a data row type and what we want to pull out of this uh, movie row is the four field values that we're going to display in the list view and there's actually two ways we can do this sort of the good way and the bad way <laughs> in terms of good object-oriented programming. The bad way is we could just say 
title equals movie row dot item array zero dot to string. And the reason this will work is we know that the movie title is the zero field in the array record. Be it, we're doing this because the form class, which is what we're in right now, actually knows nothing about the uh, XML information and the XML schema. But it knows what the record looks like because it saved it in that movie row. The trouble with taking this approach is if we move the fields around, they, the field 0, field 3 for year, field 4 for rating, and field 6 for director may not be in those positions anymore. And then it, this code will stop working. So the way we really want to do it is we want to say title equals movie class dot get movie title movie row where we pass the movie row to a method that we've written in the movie class class that we've created specifically to handle the interface to the XML data. And the way this method looks and within the movie class is public string get movie title and then the data row that's passed to us. Remember this is the data row that got saved in the tag information for this tree node. And it takes the movie row and gives it the column title we know we've read in from the XML and the XML schema and then does a two string and returns that value. We do the exactly same thing for year. Actually have a little additional code to check whether the movie row is null which is the advantage of get and set routines within a, a class designed to handle data. You want to do what's called encapsulate the data. Have a private data structure that the movie class, for instance, class knows about, but the outside world doesn't know about. And then have set and get methods such as this get, get method that return the data and set the data via the outside world so to speak such as the form class. And another advantage of doing this is you can do all kinds of things like check for values being correct and whatnot like the movie row not being null and perhaps that it's the correct table you know it's the movies table rather than the genre table another test we could perform at this point but right now I'm keeping it fairly simple and just doing returns. So in the uh, get rating for instance, I just say return movie row, which is the movie row passed to this get function, uh, which once again was saved in the tag in the tree structure, and saying return movie row rating dot to string. And one place we need to do something a little different is in the get directors, which is the fourth get method we call in retrieving these values. And it turns out the directors field has a lot of white space around the name. And we want to get rid of that white space by saying not only dot to string, but also dot trim, which gets rid of the excess white spaces around the name. So once we've retrieved all four of these values, we want to go into the list control and display them in the appropriate columns. And in order to display them in the appropriate columns in the list view, we actually need two different types of, of data objects. We need the list view item and the list view item dot list view sub items because the first column is really the real column in terms of the uh, way it's regarded by the system and the other three columns are treated as just sort of attributes you can't really select them and react to them and things like that they're just additional information about the main item so the main item is list view item and the other three items are list view dot list view sub item 
a nested object within the list view item object. So we instantiate a new list view item and we uh, assign it the value of title which we retrieve from our get title method within our movie class. Then we instantiate a new list view item dot list view sub item for the first attribute in the the three attributes that are in the same uh, row on the list view display. And for this we assign it the year string which we retrieve from our get year movie class uh, get method. Then we do the same thing for rating. Once again, a list view item dot list view sub item. And for the final uh, list view item dot list view sub item of director. And once we've created this whole list view item with all its sub view items, we then then need to take the control, which is LSV middle info, do a items, and then an add method and add the uh, whole four-part uh, record we've created, display record. So once again the effect of this is when we click on uh, 2001 A Space Odyssey we get the four fields from the XML record uh, title, year, rating, and directors. And if we, for instance, click on Lord of the Rings, we get the same four fields associated with that record because, once again, that record has been saved in the tag uh, attribute of this movie or this tree node. So we have Lord of the Rings 2001, the year it was made, PG 13 rating, and director Peter Jackson. So once again, one of the main things we want to take away from this is all of the uh, handling of the data is handled by the class we, we created specifically to handle data, the movie class. And once we've retrieved that information, we can use uh, display items like the list view item and the list view sub item to uh, populate display controls but all of the real data interfacing is handled by the, the data class. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this lesson and until we meet again in lesson 10 which talks about interfacing between the list view and the rich uh, text box, uh, remember to focus and learn a lot.